Hi everyone, my name is Pumza Mende. I have a PhD in chemistry from the University of the Vet Valdez Rand. Today I will be doing a few experiments to confirm the identity of cations in unknown salt solutions. In the previous section, we have done preliminary tests to identify the cations present in our unknown salt solutions. I will now be doing more experiments to confirm if our suspicions are correct. The identity of a cation can be confirmed by mixing the salt solution with certain chemicals that we know. These chemicals will react with the cations and result in the formation of compounds with characteristic color and appearance. In front of me, I have nine test tubes labeled A to I. These contain salt solutions with cations that have been pre-identified to be aluminum, iron, copper, nickel, cobalt, ammonium, manganese, and silver. To confirm the presence of aluminum cations, I will be adding a few drops of a dilute sodium hydroxide solution to the test tube suspected to contain aluminum hydroxide. This should result in the formation of aluminate ions and will be observed by the dissolution of the aluminum hydroxide precipitate. This is due to the presence of excess hydroxide ions in the solution. To confirm the presence of ion 3 plus cations, I will be adding 3 drops of a 0.2 molar potassium hexacyanoferrate 2 solution in 0.5 milliliter of the cation solution suspected to contain ion 3 plus. This should lead to the formation of ion 3 hexacyanoferrate 2, which can be identified by an intense blue color. The observation of a blue color in our test tubes confirms that we do have ion 3 plus cations in the solution. To confirm the presence of Fe2 plus cations, a similar reaction to the one done to confirm the presence of Fe3 plus cations will be carried out. Three drops of a 0.2 molar potassium hexacyanoferrate 3 will be mixed with 0.5 milliliter of the cation solution suspected to have Fe2 plus. This will lead to the formation of ion 2 hexacyanoferrate 3, which has an intense blue color and confirms the presence of Fe2 plus cations. Do note that the difference between the confirmation experiments done for the Fe3 plus and Fe2 plus cations is the oxidation state of the ion in the potassium hexacyanoferrate solutions. To confirm the presence of Fe3 plus cations, use the hexacyanoferrate solution with ion 2 plus. To confirm the presence of ion 2 plus cations, use the hexacyanoferrate solution with ion 3 plus. They do both give a blue color solution. Do note that all experiments involving the use of ethylene diamine must be done in the fume mode. This is because ethylene diamine does produce fumes. In the second experiment, I will be mixing five drops of benzoin oxime with two drops of the cation solution suspected to contain copper 2 plus cations. The green precipitate indicates the formation of copper benzoin oxime, which confirms the presence of copper 2 plus cations. To confirm the presence of cobalt 2 plus cations, two separate reactions will be done in two different test tubes. In the first reaction, three to five drops of ethylene diamine will be added to the test tube suspected to contain cobalt ammonium complex. A ligand exchange reaction will occur, indicating the formation of cobalt ethylene diamine complex. This will be observed by a yellow-orange color. In the second reaction, I will be adding a spatula tip of potassium thiocyanate into an empty test tube. This will be followed by one mil of the cation solution suspected to contain cobalt 2 plus. This should give a purple-blue color indicating the formation of cobalt thiocyanate. Addition of 3 ml of distilled water will turn this reaction pink, confirming the formation of cobalt hexahydrate. This is a confirmation that we do have cobalt 2 plus cations in the unknown solution. 
to confirm the presence of nickel 2 plus cations, two different reactions will be done in two separate test tubes. In the first reaction, ethylene diamine will be added to the nickel ammonia complex. This should form a nickel ethylene diamine complex by a ligand exchange reaction. A pale purple color will indicate the presence of nickel 2 plus cations. In the second experiment, I will be adding a small amount of ammonium hydroxide into the cation solution suspected to contain nickel 2 plus cations. This should form nickel hydroxide. It will be observed by a light green precipitate. Addition of excess ammonium hydroxide will form a blue colored nickel ammonium complex. This confirms the presence of nickel 2 plus cations. To confirm the presence of the ammonium cation, I will be mixing 2 ml of the suspected ammonium cation solution with 5 ml of 1 molar sodium carbonate. For the reaction to occur, I will boil the mixture over a gentle flame. Make sure that you are moving the test tube around while you are boiling. This is to avoid uh, building up pressure inside the test tube. Once the mixture starts boiling, I will place a moistened red litmus paper over the mouth of the test tube. The red litmus paper should change to blue. This is because there is formation of ammonia gas, which is evolving out from the reaction out of the test tube. This confirms the presence of ammonium cations. To confirm the presence of manganese cations, I will be adding a spatula tip of sodium bismuthate to 1 ml of the cation solution suspected to contain MN2+. To this, I will add 2 ml of dilute sulfuric acid. This should result in the formation of permanganate ions, and it can be observed by the presence of a red color. This confirms the presence of MN2 plus cations. To confirm the presence of silver cations, I will add three drops of dilute hydrochloric acid to one mil of the cation solution suspected to contain silver. Formation of the white precipitates indicates the presence of silver chloride. To further confirm that there is silver present, I will be adding five drops of dilute ammonia. The precipitate should dissolve after addition of five drops of dilute ammonia. However, if it does not dissolve, you can add more drops. So I will add more ammonia until the precipitate dissolves. Dissolution of the precipitate indicates the formation of a silver ammonium complex. This therefore confirms the presence of silver cations. This concludes the experiments on qualitative analysis of cations.